Question number one belongs to Cassie Schauer. Hi, Joe. My name is Cassie, and I'm a web tech specialist from Wisconsin. I produce responsive Captivate e-learning products to train our members on a variety of HR topics. My question is in regards to audio repeat. I have a slide that is set up as a menu with clickable buttons that takes participants to other slides within the training. There is audio associated with that slide that plays and then pauses until a button is clicked. Throughout the training, participants are directed back to that menu slide to click on other buttons to learn more. My question is, when they are taken back to the main menu slide, is there a way to have the audio not repeated again so that there's no audio played at all? Thank you. Okay, Cassie, what I've done is I've created two slides here. One that has an image from your video here, the first one, and then the second one, of course, has the place that the video says the first one goes to. I do that by having a click box on this one that jumps to slide two, which is called choice one. And then on slide two, I have this return uh, arrow that you had uh, jumping back to slide one using a click box. But of course you can use smart shapes, which is normally what I would use. But since I captured the whole image, I just threw a, a click box on there. Okay, now how do we make sure that the audio plays only the first time? To do that, well, you know, if we create an audio file, it's going to go directly onto the timeline. And you know what? I already have done that. But once I did that, I deleted it from the timeline. Well, why'd you do that, Joe? Well, because when you, when you create the audio and then delete it from the timeline, it's still going to be in your library. And here it is. I, I renamed it Welcome over here. And the audio plays exactly what's on the screen over here. Click on each button to learn more about a topic. Once complete, click the Finish button. And that's it. So we want to be able to play that, but only the first time that the learner comes to this slide here. So to do that, we really can't have it on the timeline. Uh, we could use an action called play audio, but that would be the same thing because it's going to invariably play it every single time. What we want to do instead is to use this action right here called play audio, but within what's called an advanced action. An advanced action uh, when we click on this will allow us to create an action. In this case, it's going to be a conditional action because we're going to be playing the audio on a condition. What is the condition? The condition is if it's the first time they've come to the slide here. So to do that, what we'll need to do is to create this conditional action uh, starting with a name. So let's call this one play once perhaps. And then down here, what we want to do is to set a condition. Well, the condition requires that we are keeping track of the screen that we're on um, and whether or not we've seen it before. So to do that, we're going to have a variable. Click on variables here, and we're going to create a new user variable. And you can call it, for instance, it's nice to start with an underscore because then it always appears at the top of the variable list, underscore uh, played, for instance. Underscore played. So played is just going to keep track as, as to whether something has been played or not. It's, it's going to start out as zero because zero in this case is going to mean that it has not been played yet. So we save that and we close this. And now over here, when we double click and say variable, well, right there at the top is played. So we're going to choose that one. If played is equal to the literal value of zero, which it is initially, remember that, um, we haven't played anything yet, so it is still zero, then the action is going to be that same old play audio option that we saw earlier. And the audio file we're going to play is this welcome one right here. We click OK. And last thing we have to do then is to say, well, OK, now that we played the audio, we have to make sure we assign this played variable to a one. That way, it's not going to play ever again uh, for this student, for this learner <laughs> during this session. So now I'm going to assign, assign to the variable called underscore played a literal value of one. So if you think about it, the next time that the learner comes to this slide, it's going to automatically run this conditional action again, but the condition this time will not be true because played is not going to be equal to zero, it's going to be equal to one. So save as an action and then close it. And over here, you'll see that it's automatically been set to execute advanced actions called play once, the one we just created. However, if you've already created other advanced actions in here, then this 
will probably not be the one that's chosen. Uh, you'll probably have to drop this down and choose the right one there. It's a step that's often forgotten um, because we tend to think of it as automatically being set. But just be careful that it doesn't, uh, that you don't go crazy because you're thinking, why isn't it working? And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, even though I created that action, I haven't set it over here. All right, so let's try this out and see if it works. We'll try this in the browser. Click on each button to learn more about a topic. Once complete, click the finish button. So we heard the audio. We click, go to that slide. We click to go back. And yay, the audio is not playing. Perfect.